Hey, welcome to the project uh, walkthrough on caching data. So this is good. We're going to create the code to be able to cache data, and this uh, is very important for many reasons. Uh, sometimes when you're working with third-party APIs; they only allow you so many fetches per hour, and so if you can cache the data, which essentially means store it in your browser, then you don't have to fetch it as often. And so basically, the logic is that when you go to get data. You first check if it's in your cache. If it's in your cache, then you use that. Otherwise, you fetch the data and then cache it. So that's the basic logic for caching. There's always a decision to make on how long you want the data to remain in the cache. And that is a difficult question. And it's something that you can figure out by reading the docs and seeing how many, how many fetches you're allowed. Sometimes it's unlimited, but sometimes you only get five per hour. So if you only get five per hour, maybe you want to for sure cache it, but maybe just for an hour, because once once the hour's uh, gone by. However, if you have really static data, it doesn't change much, you might as well just cache it for 24 hours. You know, So we're going to learn how to set those expiration dates, label our caches, and whatnot. And we'll be using the data from the open weather map, so you'll want to go ahead and get your ID, um, get your API key, you probably have it left from, you can use the same one from a previous assignment. And you'll be starting with a pro project that's already working. And then basically what you're going to be doing is setting up caching in it. So let's start by forking this. And while that's forking, I'll just run this and see, and you can see how it works. So you can see we have this favorite city. So the data that we're going to cache is a collection of favorite cities. So this is another reason to cache is that you can have user preferences cached. And so let's say I'm searching and I find a set of cities for Paris. And so I have this button saved to favorite cities. And when I save that, it gives me this list and then if I refresh, you'll notice it remembers that city, and I can then use that to go get the five-day forecast and such. Uh, and then just a quick look at where this data is kept. Um, if you go into the inspector and look under application, you'll see local storage, and it's always mapped to the domain name. So you can see that in here I have cached and I'm using weather in front of all of my tags, my labels. And so I've got city search, current weather, favorite cities, and forecast. And it's all cached and I can just pull it out of the cache. So let's take a look at how we uh, set up the code to do caching. <clears throat> all right, I've, I've got, um, let's see, got my data fork now, suwebdev4000 caching data, and I am ready to clone this to start working on this. So let's go here. So while that's cloning, I just want to point out that what we're going to be using to do this is a library um, called ViewLS. It stands for local storage. So we have a wrapper around some local storage code. You can use local storage. You can actually write your own vanilla JavaScript for local storage. Um, but when you're using a framework like Vue, let's see the local storage here. Yes, yeah, so you can find information about getting and setting directly in local storage. But when we're using something like Vue, it's nice to find a library wrapper and we'll see again how that gets loaded. So the first thing we want to do is run the npm install. And once that's done, we can get the server going. We're going to be working through this 13.6 project caching data. So we can see that we're going to get grab our key um, and then we're going to set up some code in main.js to pull in this wrapper, this view ls library. Um, then we're going to city search and set up the favorite cities. Uh, we actually have a favorite cities um, 
component, but we need to add a couple of methods to it. Um, and we'll take a look at that. And then we'll be doing the caching for all of our router views so that they can check the cache before actually calling out to the internet to get data via the API. Uh, so that this is basically uh, what we're going to be doing. So let's start in here. We'll get the server going. And we'll just make sure that that gets up and running correctly. Let's see. And so I should be able to run this. Oh, I've got my 401, so I need to get my key in there. And it's just using the common data. So let's just, we're using that interceptor that we've worked with before, the Axios interceptor. So we can just go in and put our API into this common. And this will cover all of our needs. Okay, and let's just see if that's working now. So, yes, yeah, so we, we've, we've now basically got the app that we had written back when we were studying, um, back when we were studying getting data from APIs and routing. All right, so, the first thing that we want to do again is to pull in this code here. We'll get this into our main JS. This will make the view LS code available to us, which just gives us a good wrapper around our local storage calls. So we're going to go to main and you can see there's to do's and this to do is telling us that we need to add view storage. So we added view storage and we set up a namespace. So this weather underscore underscore that becomes part of the label that you see. We saw that looking at in our cache. So all of our caches will be prefixed with this namespace. That keeps it separate in case we had a whole bunch of other components that were caching for something other than weather. Um, and then we just pass that options in when we use it. Um, but you can see that we got a an error here. So we're, we're seeing that a dependency not found. So view ls, we called for it, but we, in fact, it's not there. And if we check in package JSON in dependencies, we can see that, oh, it hasn't been loaded yet. So we need to install that. And um, it, you can see that NPM kind of gives you a clue of how you can get that. So it's telling you maybe you could run install save um, ULS. So that's exactly what we need to do. We're just going to NPM install it. And with the dash dash save, it should end up in our dependencies. So let's just run that. And we want to record it in dependencies. So the next time we pull this out of GitHub or, or want to use it, it's already set up to be installed when we run the npm install. So there's our view ls. And now if we get our server going, we shouldn't have any errors. So we haven't actually written any code here. We've just uh, got some the library that we're going to use for caching set up. So looking back at our project instructions, we've, we've got the view ls in there. The next thing we want to do is get our favorite cities component integrated in. And so we're going to do that in the way that we, we normally have been doing it. We're going to import, so we, we're going to bring in this favorite cities component. It happens to already have been written and placed in components. So we have a favorite cities and that means that we can just go to our views, pull up our city search view, and we can add our favorite cities right in here. So we'll have to do two things. One, we will have to, well, before we put that in, why don't we import this? So we'll uh, import favorite cities from at, at components. favorite cities. 
Okay, so we we're, we import that, and then we're going to want to add it to our. We've got a to do here. We need to register it with components, so we'll call it favorite cities, and it will map to the favorite cities components. So we've imported it. We've got it set up as a component. Now we are ready. We should be able to grab this. Um, we, so yes, we've imported it. We've added it to components. Well, let's just grab the favorite cities tag. So we, we mapped it to this favorite dash cities. And you can see that it's going to hand off some data called favorites which, let's see, favorites is an array that we've set up in data. And so we're going to need to do some list management on this favorites. But let's just take a look at what we've got from doing that. So you can see it added this little view here. This is what the favorite cities component renders um, within our city search. But now we need to add some, uh, some ways to, to manage that view. Well, let's see. Oh, we need to add it, we need to have a parameter. So we've got this button, Save City to Favorites. And so that's going to be how we, the user adds Save Cities. OK. Let's take a look at this. So we have this button on our city search view. So each one of our cities has its own button. And, you know, it's pulling through the v4 a variable city out of the results. And then it's going to call save city and hand off that city. So this is our first entry into the code that manages that list. And we have this save city, um, save city function, and we need to add logic. So the logic is that... We're going to push this to favorites because that's that's our internal array list favorites push city. So that that sets us up so that in our, internally for this run of the code we've we've got favorites and we can hand that off to the favorite cities component. But we also now want to put it in the cache. So if I say ls set favorite cities. So I'm giving it, so this $LS is how I refer to the ViewLS uh, library component that lets me uh, easily add to the local storage and this dot favorites. So with that, I am both making the data available to hand off to the favorite cities component and I'm also caching it. Okay, so let's just see what happens with that. And keep in mind, I've got a, a setter here. I'm also going to need a getter. Okay, and so this will, when I make a choice, this will set it. But, so if I click on that, and I, you can see that that sets it. However, when I refresh, it's gone. So that's because I haven't got a setter. But we can definitely take a look and see that by doing the local storage call, go to application, local storage, that I have set that favorite city's value. So let's set up the rest of our list management. So we've got a, a way to save it. Now we need a way to get it. So we're going to do that in this created function. And remember, the created function gets run as part of the life cycle of the view framework is that every time the, uh, this component, the city search, gets loaded and this particular component created, it runs this code. So what we'll do is we will have it, we'll use this as a place to retrieve any favorite cities from the list, um, from the local storage. So we always want to check when we're going to try to use something in local storage to make sure it's actually there before we try to pull it out. So we'll call this, we'll call on the local storage and 
we have a nice integration there. We, we can actually refer to this dollar $LS as, as a this, as if it's part of our component. And we'll hand off the favorite cities. Favorite cities. And we will be able to set this dot favorites, our local array, equal to this dot dollar ls get. So favorite cities. All right, so what, we, what we're doing, and you'll see this used a lot with pulling out of the cache, is we'll first get it and set that up as a Boolean. So if we get anything, that will be true. And then once we see that there is something, we'll call it again and actually set up a local reference. So this now, at this point, we were able to save it. And then if we refresh, we should be able to pick it up again. So let's try that out. We'll refresh and we will clear our cache and we'll call on Seattle and we will. Ah, I just noticed something though. When we refresh there, oh, there it is. So we refresh, there we've got it cleared, we've got it refreshed and let's try it. So, so far we, we really only have, the, we should have the ability to save it to favorite cities, get it cached, and when we refresh, that favorite cities should still be there. Good. So our, our set is working, we're getting it into the cache, and then we're also getting it out of the cache when we load this component. So that's looking good. Now we just have one thing left to do, which is when I click this remove, it doesn't, it's not going away. So that remove is actually a handler that is being handled within favorite cities. It's, it's not part of, you know, we're not clicking any buttons that are in the city search. We're actually clicking a button in favorite cities. So we have to do our remove uh, function, removing from the cache in the favorite cities component. So if we go to favorite cities, you can see there's a to-do that we need to remove this from the favorite cities component. And we've got a hint here that we can use the splice method. And some of you have already been using that for list management. But what we do is we'll just create a local variable to find out where this city is. So, so we've got this remove city. And just, just to take a look at that, the actual button to do the remove is right up here inside favorite cities. That's why we need to deal with the function in here. So they click. And we, we're going to call the remove city function and hand off the city. So that city comes in as a parameter. And we're going to see if we can find this parameter in this favorite cities index of city. And so remember, index of is going to return a negative 1 if it doesn't find it. Otherwise, it will return the location in the array. So. Then once we've got that, we can say this dot favorite cities dot splice and splice will just take a chunk out of the array. So we'll go to the city index that we just found and we will just take one item out. So the splice takes two parameters, the starting parameter and then the number of items to remove. All right. And then once we've done that, so now we've Taken So favorite cities, again, came in as a prop, which means we have a reference to it, which means if we change it in here, in this component, it changes it in the component that handed it off to us. So then that was city search. So by updating in, in here with this props, we've actually updated it for the parent component as well. But we also want to... We also want to cache it. So we'll just do our $LS setter and favorite cities, this dot favorite cities. All right. Um, we technically do not need to use semicolons in, in our view apps. They 
are use a linter that doesn't require that and the Babel doesn't require that to transpile it. So we'll leave those off. Um, and so now we have we've set up the ability to remove favorite cities. So let's let's try that out. We'll go to our okay our app. So we have Paris logged in there. We can go to Paris and and so forth. Look at different aspects. Um, if we remove that, oh, it's not quite removing. Let's see, is there an error in here? Favorite cities is not defined. Let's take a look at that. Right, so you know, looking at the console, I can click on this and I can go right to the error. Um, I can see that it's telling me if I hover over this, say favorite cities is not defined. So let's take a look at that code. I think I see the problem. It's got to be this dot favorite cities. And let's, yep, that just compiled. We'll refresh that. So let's try our delete again. And there it is, it's gone. And if we check our, um, it, should, it should also be gone. Go away. Uh, yes, it's an empty, Favorite Cities is now an empty array. So we saved, after we spliced it out, we saved it and we saved the empty array. So that looks good. Right, so, you know, looking at the console, I can click on this and I can go right to the error. Um, I can see that it's telling me, if I hover over this, say favorite cities is not defined. So let's take a look at that code. I think I see the problem. It's got to be this dot favorite cities. And let's, yep, that just compiled. We'll refresh that. So let's try our delete again. And there it is. It's gone. And if we check our, um, it should, it should also be gone. Go away. Uh, yes, it's an empty, Favorite Cities is now an empty array. So we saved, after we spliced it out, we saved it and we saved the empty array. So that looks good. All right, so we've taken care of a type of caching which is allowing us to save user preferences. So some personalization there. The next thing that we want to address is being able to deal with uh, caching API data so that we aren't don't have to go out and fetch it as often. So it's actually going to end up being the same sort of code, different labels in each of our router views where we are fetching data. And if you look at this, we're basically going to be doing some logic around the API call. So we're going to set up a cache label and an expiration for each one of these. Um, so, so that we can cache data that we get from an API call. So when we fetch data from the API in our, in our success, we'll set that, that data using the cache expiry and the label. Um, but before we call for API, we'll test to see if there is data already cached. And if it is, we're going to use that instead of making the API call. So let's, uh, let's set this up. And the one thing you want to be careful of here is that we're going to have a different label for each of our router views. So we'll start with city search. Let's just grab this. And this is easy to make a mistake if you get your labels wrong. But if I go to city search and where I'm getting the cities, you can see there's a couple of uh, to-dos here. One, set up the cache label and expiry. So I just copied those. And... So I'm going to label the city search API data as city search and I'm going to add the query. So if I'm calling for Paris, it'll be city search Paris. The expiry has got to be calculated in milliseconds. So I have a 15 minute expiration time. So 15 times 60, 60 seconds per minute, a thousand milliseconds per second. That'll give me my expiry. So with those two, I can now set up my logic. And in this logic, again, I don't want to make an API call. I don't want to make an API call if I've already got the data cached. And I'm not caching it for very long, just 15 minutes. But if someone's checking weather a lot, this can save some API calls. You want to be careful. You're setting up an if-then-else here to put the end of the else at the end of 
this uh, so at the end of your full promise uh, handling so you've got your API you've got your then your catch and so we want to put this else closure there so let's format formatting can help you see if you've captured that so it looks like we've got that so we, again the logic is for caching on an API is to first check to see if the cache contains any data because it will expire after 15 minutes and it won't contain it at that point or if it never got cached it won't contain it if it does I'm going to just pull the data out of the cache using the get and set my results to that otherwise I'm going to call the API get the data out of the from the API call okay so let's uh, let's take a look at that and I'm logging that I that I got my data from the cache query let's also log that we're getting it uh, data from API. So the first time I make this call, first time I make this call, it's gonna, it should log that it's getting it from the, let's just do one city, Seattle. First time data from API, all right? And great, now what if I make the call again? Well, let's just check first. Did I cache it? Uh, okay, favorite cities. Doesn't look like it got cached. Uh, let's just refresh to be sure. Okay, yeah, no, it doesn't look like it got cached. So if I call it again, if it's not cached, it's going to go from the API again. And to notice it just increments it. Okay, so something I've done something wrong because it's not getting it out of the cache. So... Let's see, cache label. Let's just check and see if the logic is working. And we'll just go down to our city search. Get cities. Let's just make sure I've got the right copy here. So we'll find our city search. And got the cache label okay there's our logic let's just double check this so I click on S Seattle I've got a city search Seattle I've got cache expiry 90,000 milliseconds and I do my check let's just take a look there and see if there's anything there there's nothing in there oh well that doesn't look right so if there's nothing in there that should go down to here yes oh right I see the problem so I got my results out of here just fine but I didn't save them to the cache so if you look back at the code when you get your results you need to cache them so that's that's important so down here when I get the results I need to cache it and you'll see that in the instructions too that in your response the first thing you want to do is cache it otherwise it's not going to be available for the next call so we get the results and then we use the cache label and the cache expiry to cache it and we'll save it and let's go try that now all right so refresh and oh let's clear the cache good thing to do during development we'll just clear that out so nothing's cached. The call Seattle. Let's watch the console. So the first time, oh, let's stop the breakpoints. First time, we got the data and we cached it. Second time, within 15 minutes, it, it detected the query and it didn't call the API. So we and from now on, you can see when I call for the next 15 minutes, it's going to pull it out of the cache. All right. So basically, now with that we're ready to, to apply the same logic to our other view, our other, uh, view components. And those are current weather um, and forecast. So let's just do one at a time. And we want to be careful about this because they have different labels. If you gave them all the same label, uh, then they'd overlap each other and it would be kind of a big mess because they don't really have exactly the same data. But let's just take a look. It's the same. You almost start thinking, well, hey, I could refactor this because it's very similar except for some data. 
but for now we're just going to get this code in here. So in current weather, we're going to set up a cache label and a cache expiry, but we want to change the label from city search to current weather. By making this a variable, at least when we use cache label later on, it'll, it'll in getting and setting, it will be the same. And we'll use the same expiry. And then we can use the exact same logic too. In fact, this is exactly the same, where we are going to test to see if the data is in the cache. And if it's there, we're going to use it. Otherwise, we're going to run the API, which means we need to end that there, end our if statement. And then we don't want to forget to pick up to, to set up the cache label or set up the, the caching setter. So after we get the data, we cache it and we'll log it. And why don't we call this, yeah, it says cache label. So it'll show us that we cached it for current weather. So let's go test that. And if we go, we have to get to current weather. And once we're there, should have cached that. Yes, so we cached current weather. And it looks like it did not pick up our our unique variable. And again, this is the danger of using query paste. We use this dot query, but that is not what is getting handed off. Remember when we hand off to these uh, views for current weather and forecast, we're, we're actually sending off, sending it off, uh, not through, not through the query, but through this parameters. So we need to pick it up with route params. Let's go just check the uh, instructions here. So if we scroll down, remember all of this code is at the end. We'll just use the we'll be using the dollar route params to get the label though. So we're gonna get the city ID and the dollar route params. We're not using a query to get that. So we just want to be sure to get this set up correctly. That looks good. And now if we go back, let's just clear out our cache again go home. So we have an empty cache. We'll do this one more time. We cache our city weather. We go to current weather and you can see now we've given it a unique key which is the city ID there. Okay so that is that is clearly cached. So now if we refresh this page cache query detected. Um, so we actually want to go pull it again and go to current weather and the cache query is detected. Huh, but we're not getting our data. Let's just see what went wrong there. Again, it is the problem of copy paste and the fact that things aren't named the same. So you can see I used, I copied the results equals this. Well, we're calling it weather data in this component. So I can't really use, I need to use the same, I need to use the same name. So this is why if we really could refactor this and, and not have to worry about these specific variable names, we could probably have something a little bit cleaner. But right now we were just concerned about getting this caching going. So what we want to do is just refresh that and now we're going to set that into weather data which is what this result should be known as and you can see that it it filled that out just fine. So copy paste nice because it's quick but not nice because names aren't always the same in the places that you're copying to. Let's do one more and we'll be done. We're going to just set up the same thing for the forecast. So once again, I'm going to go with copy-paste. 
And in the forecast, we will be using the route um, key just like we were. We're going to be using the city ID coming out of the router just like we did for current weather. So we're good with that, but we need to change this label. And the label here will be forecast. That's an arbitrary name, but it, once you set it, that's what you're going to expect to see in the app in the Chrome Dev Tools. And then once again, I am going to copy and paste, but I'm going to be real careful here and make sure that I'm referencing the results the same way that they are referenced. Um, So it's also difficult, you know, when you're dealing with these curly braces, the starting and ending, to get them in the right place. That can cause you some problems. So just make sure that this else is covering the entire API call, which includes the then and the catch. Okay, so that should be good. And the formatter can help you with that. But what am I calling this in the response? Ah, I am calling it weather data, so I'm good to call it weather data when I get it out of the cache. So let's go try out the forecast, and I'll just set that. So this just turns the debugger on and off. You can see that those go disabled. So I can keep my breakpoints, but I don't have to debug. So let's go home and try this again. And this time, we we'll want to use, we want to try it out with forecast. So go. Let's first, let's just clear this out. Go home, start from the beginning. So when you're doing this kind of testing, you want to clear everything out, no extra variables. Not worried about favorite cities. Go to view weather, we got that, that looks good. And then we go to five day forecast. And nothing got cached. Okay, so something something did not work there. It's We've got the, the caching notes on city search and current weather, but not on forecast. So let's go take a look at what happened there. Um, and again, I think I'm just going to need to debug it. So we'll go to sources and we'll find our forecast. Because just reading it can be difficult. That's why I always ask for code that is rendered. Let's take a look at this. So we've got our cache label. That looks good. And if we look at application, we don't have anything cached. So we should skip over that. And then we're going to make our call. Oh, we didn't pull it out of the cache at all. So we need to add the code that gets it out of the cache. So let's go back here and borrow that. We need to pull weather data out of the cache. Or we actually we need to set the cache during the response. So we're pulling it out of the cache okay, but we're not setting it. So let's go back to forecast. As we make our call, we get back our response, we set the weather data, and then we cache it. Okay? So it's always that, that same logic. Check to see if it's in the cache. If it is, set your data to that data from the cache. Otherwise, make your call. If you have a successful response, pull that into your local data structure and then set that data in the cache. Okay, so let's try our test again. And let's go home and just start from the beginning. Have a nice clear cache. And Seattle. And see, we don't need to stop. We'll just go application. So we've got our city search cache. We go to current weather, that's cached. We go to five day forecast, that's cached. So now when we refresh five day forecast, cache query detected. So it pulled it out of the cache. So this is how you work with caching. And I might just say that caching, you know, it's important to think about your naming. It's important to think about how long you want to leave it in the cache. It's important to have your code fixed so that you're pulling it out of the cache when you expect it to be there and you're setting it when you get a new chunk of data. 
Let me, I'll just share with you the two hard things. This is kind of a well-known saying. And Martin Fowler's a guy who's created a lot. He created design patterns, which are really uh, used a lot in back-end programming. But the two hard things in computer science, cache invalidation and naming things. Okay, so we know naming things is hard because, you know, do I put an S on it? How do I name my variables? Are these variables really the same thing? There's a lot of problems come up with naming. But cache invalidation, now you're seeing a little bit of that, is like, when do I remove something from the cache? Like, how long do I leave it there? When do I do it? Where in the code do I do it? What are the implications of putting things in a cache and taking them out? And you can see there's a lot of people commenting um, on that. But anyway, just so you are aware that, that this is an important topic and it, it's really important for optimizing your, your application to use caching because you may find APIs that don't let you make very many calls per hour. And if you've got it cached, that won't be a problem. Anyway, um, let's go just go back and look at this code again. So you've got all the code you need. Um, and really, I think the secret to doing this assignment is to being able to use your Chrome Dev Tools, in particular, being able to look at and manage your, your local storage and see what you've got and when you've got it. And then, of course, being able to interpret your console logs. Um, but Anyway, the good good project, uh, and I hope what you learn here you will continue to use in all of your view projects. All right, okay, let's just finish this off by doing our build and getting this up on GitHub. So we've got all our code put together. I just want to get this built into docs, and then. We will push it up. And get push. All right. So now we're going to just head on over to our Get Pub project. And we'll go to settings, GH pages, choose docs, save, uh, enforce HTTPS. That's since I'm using a DNS name. Let this get published. Just looking for that green bar and take a look at this. Give it a quick test. And at favorites, you can see it kept Paris from before. And there we are, We're looking good. Um, all right, so let's just grab this URL and I will just replace it, replace this SU web dev with mine. And then I can just turn in these two links, my github.com and my rendered code. All right, so that's it.